Welcome to Greater Grace Church of Chester and Ellesmere Port. Uh, this is our midweek service. We're going to be online for those that are watching online. There might not be as many people watching online tonight as usual because we have... I'm going to just get, show around the room. We have a few people here, there tonight. Uh, so let's uh, go right around the room so we can get everybody in. Uh, there we go. But, uh, yeah, it's like, anyway... <laughs> Yeah, it's good for us to be together. We need fellowship, we need life. Tonight is Nigel's birthday as well, so we could, just tonight, not this, not today, just tonight. Uh, so, uh, yeah, uh, this is the thing you tell people for this cake and suddenly more people come out. Um, but it's good to have life and fellowship and uh, uh, we have this week, uh, uh, church has had various things going on. The school has had Ofsted and it is now it is now over. We only yeah. had out on Monday. Uh, God has been faithful so uh, we just thank you for those that were praying. It was all a bit hurried so uh, we didn't get the chance to ask everyone to pray uh, but uh, we have uh, we're here tonight and it's Wednesday night so um, just a little reminder as well, if this is the first time you've, you've found us, we're also on ggechurch.co.uk and YouTube at the Greater Grace Evangelical Church, and you can find us there. Let's pray. Let's uh, come together and bring this time to the Lord and just trust Him for each situation. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We worship you tonight, Lord. And our heart is to worship you. Just literally to lift up the name of our Saviour. Our great God of wonders. Our King. Thank you Lord. You are you are mighty. You are uh, the Lord going in the midst of us. Thank you Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your gentleness. Thank you for your uh, overcoming power Lord. We thank you Lord that you have been with each one, thank you for strengthening, and particularly, Lord, this week for uh, Ofsted and all of the other details as well. Pray for our family situation, for our father, and for the funeral that Jim and her are going to uh, for the weekend, Lord. Bless and use Jim, Lord, we pray. Mm. Anoint anything that he shared there, Lord, for the gospel's sake, Lord. Just really guide the bless their trip to Scotland cover there, protect each one. For others as well, for Haley and for Tristan, that you'd heal there, for Michael and Charlie, others as well. Uh, any others that have had this uh, illness recently, cover and heal. Protect Jane from getting it, Lord, we pray. Uh, and just minister life, protect each one, Lord. Uh, and just encourage hearts now tonight, Lord, we pray. Thank you for your faithfulness and your goodness. We want to lift up Ukraine as well, Lord, just our, our friends, our brothers and sisters there, uh, various ones uh, in Cherkasy and Lviv, uh, Kiev and Odessa. Thank you, Lord, for our churches there, uh, the pastors, their wives, their families, Lord, and just body members. And just really guide for each one, Lord, protect dramatically, miraculously, Lord, and just heal the nation, Lord, this season. We pray for the Russian soldiers as well that are forced to fight and maybe don't want to. We pray that you would uh, minister life to them, that there would be salvations on both sides and minister to the troubled nation of Ukraine at this time. Really, God, we pray. Thank you, Lord, for your heart for each one your direct provision Lord guide us and strengthen us touch lives Lord we pray and bless in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen Wow it's nice to actually have people here tonight uh, it's, a, it's a great blessing so we're going to read so we've been doing the series on Psalm 118 uh, we're not quite sick of it yet, but there we go. Um, we are tonight. We're going to read from uh, 
two well-known verses from it. We'll do eight and nine. We'll just read two verses tonight. Uh, it says, It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Let's pray. Just. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words tonight, Lord, and we just trust you. We ask you for your guidance, your spirits filling, Lord. Uh, touch, Lord, we are unable to know your heart without your spirit. We are able, unable to say anything without your, your word, Lord. Thank you that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And Lord, touch now, Lord, we pray, just anoint. We are nothing, Lord, and we need you, Lord. Anoint with your Holy Spirit of beauty and truth, of life and grace now. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow. Better to trust in the Lord. Um, first of all, let's get this out of the, the way. Um, uh, at the moment I work for a food company. One of our customers, not one of my customers, it's one of my colleagues that deals with them, uh, is princes. We're not talking about <laughs> the, uh, the the princes fish paste or anything like that. So, uh, we, please don't uh, take that as a, as a thing. But yeah, to trust in the Lord. The point here tonight actually is this simply to trust in the Lord is better than anything. That's the thing, isn't it? To trust in the Lord. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Fine, but actually the key to that is to trust in the Lord. Psalm 146. It says in verse 3, Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. Oh. Now you might say, well, isn't that just saying the same thing? Yeah, it's good to repeat things. It's good to repeat things for emphasis. The Bible does that. You see things uh, coming up again in different places. Uh, yes, it is the same thing. There, there it's the other way around. It's princes first and then it man. But it also says that there's no help. Funnily enough, we were discussing that just before. Uh, people came about where does help come from and we were saying with nice on sheet what is the root of certain things because actually it's a quite a key thing for us to to know uh, what is the root of psychology where does it come from is it from God or is it from man's wisdom is it just from is it from the the spirit of the living God the creator or is it just from Sigmund Freud's mind? Uh, you know, it's like, where, where do these things come from? What about other things? What about self-help groups? Uh, is, is, there, is there God in them? Sometimes they can be. Christian-inspired groups for, for helping people. But sometimes it can be just the wisdom of man. Wow. There's no help. Wow, that's quite severe, isn't it, when we think about it? It's quite a shocking thing. Proverbs uh, 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all mine heart, and lean not on thine own understanding. Same thought again. Same idea. But, again... Uh, something else we were talking about this evening uh, 
how the Christian life is learning little by little over years not to lean on our own understanding and to allow the Spirit of God and the Word of God and the truth of the Gospel to transform our thinking and to transform our lives and it might not be an immediate thing it might not happen overnight but little by little as we as we are taught by the Spirit of God led by truth and as we start to absorb scripture and life and as we uh, live in fellowship with the body of Christ and get encouraged by people as well little by little uh, things change we were saying actually that one of the most challenging things is to allow God to completely transform our thinking because we all think we're right basically don't we you know, every one of us we know oh well I'm right about that but actually for us to say oh wow could I be wrong but the word of God is right what if there's a difference in thinking between what I think and what the Bible says what if there's a difference in thinking with what I've absorbed from this world system or uh, I think I've been taught in the school or heard on the TV and what the words of Jesus are you know who do we trust and it's an easy easy contest for us the longer we are we are a believer but um, we, uh, we we are all growing with that and we never stop growing in that uh, learning to trust in the Lord Trust uh, in the Lord little by little. I will trust in the Lord more and more. I was thinking it was quite funny. On, on, on Sunday, our message was about my grace being sufficient. And then later on in the evening, it was on the let the weak say I am strong. Uh, and then on Monday, we heard that Offset were coming. <laughs> and to our school and you're thinking it's amazing God's wisdom in these things it's like you know because I remember when I was preaching them, I was thinking isn't this just a bit of a mundane message and it's just the same sort of thing that we always preach on but actually you know what God knows that we need it to be reminded that actually when we're weak when we're strong wow God knows exactly what we need. He knows what we're going through. He knows what we're about to go through before we go through it. And uh, the wisdom of God said that grace would be fully sufficient and that God would be enough. Yeah, that's it. Learn to trust Him. Keep trusting Him. Grow in trusting Him. That's how it goes really, isn't it? In uh, Psalm 37, uh, verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. And again, maybe we know the verses after it better, which is, Delight thyself in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart commit thy way to the Lord trust also him and he shall bring it to pass but actually before those ones trust in the Lord and do good and I shall dwell in the land that was a promise to Israel um, because actually that was the covenant that God had with them taking them into a promised land it's this contract that we read in the book of Deuteronomy more or less the whole book of Deuteronomy it's like a contractual agreement um, terms and conditions you know it's like do people read the book of Deuteronomy do people actually read it and enjoy it and it's like oh yes sir. then do people read terms and conditions when they buy something like, you know, oh, I'm just going to click on that and get over it. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to throw that bit in the, in the box with the, you know, it's like, no, this is the point. But actually, that's the, the important bit. And 
<laughs> that's really what the, the book of Deuteronomy was about. It was like God saying, hey, if you trust me and believe me and follow me and live by me, then I'll go before you. I'll go into the land and you'll have the land and you'll have success in the land and it'll be fruitful and prosperous and your livestock will be fruitful and prosperous. We have our livestock wandering around here as well. Uh, just to uh, see whether that <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but yeah, so it's like uh, yeah, the terms and conditions in a way, Deuteronomy. Uh, but you know, you'll live, you'll dwell in the land, dwelling in the land that was a promise. Trust in the Lord, and see what promises get fulfilled through it. Trust in the Lord, and see what He does. That's the. That is the thing, and uh, the Old Testament was like that. There was that conditional um, agreement that if you be obey, if you believe, then you will receive. In the New Testament, we we live by grace. That is, to Christ died for everyone, and uh, it's up to us to realize that. It wasn't a case of, well, if you've done good enough, then you'll get the benefit. It's a case of, well, I know that you never can do, do well enough. So I'll die for you for that sake. Trust in the Lord. And, uh, yeah, it is better to trust in the Lord than it is to, to put confidence a man, no confidence in man, no confidence in the flesh. Remember that, Philippians three three. Um, yeah. No confidence in man. What does that mean? No confidence in ourself. And you might say, well, surely self confidence is a good thing. Well, there's a degree where yes, okay, it's not good to be uh, too uh, nervous about these things, but not to the degree that we are relying on ourselves for everything godly confidence is far better than self-confidence self-confidence that is perceived by the world in a believer can often be godly confidence because we have no confidence in ourselves because we have no confidence in our flesh we rely on somebody who's bigger than us and that gives us great confidence to go out with boldness we can go into this world and we can we can do things that we never thought we could do uh, or we never thought that we would do why well because the Lord is with us and we rely on him and he does the work through us and it's like now rather than us to have to worry about oh if I do this will it will it be a failure we just pray and say Lord well this is in your hands, I, I'm, I'm going to be used by you. And the results are up to you. Do I have to go out and say, do outreach, and, and, uh, and I'm under the pressure that, oh, somebody must get saved? Or do we say, no, we just go on outreach. And God does what he wants. Because he's taken us there, he leads us there, and he, he uses us in the way that he wants us. And then the pressure is on us. And that gives us great confidence because it's the Lord doing the work <laughs> and not us. And the same with anything, the same with our prayer life, the same with inviting our friends. It's like, well, I just pray about it and invite them. And it's up to them and it's up to God whether they come or not. Whatever it is, however we do it, whatever God's called us to do, we just trust in Him, not in ourselves. It's better to trust in the Lord to put confidence in that. Wow. Confidence in man in ourselves, but also in other humans, in other people, in human judgment. We have the gospel of grace and the spirit of truth. And this is where our confidence is from the gospel of grace that saved me and the spirit of truth that fills us and guides us 
that gives us great confidence not in ourself not in this world not in in uh, human ability but in our God not in others not in other people sometimes we do tend to idolise other people um, we put people on a pedestal and say oh that person's a leader that person's good that person's great that, uh, that person's far better than I am but we don't put confidence in them or not in, in princes what is it what's princes powerful people influential people we don't put our confidence in in organizations like for example maybe the military the educational system uh, the national health system whatever it is it's like you know the government you know it's like no it's like the, these things are there's nothing wrong with these things they're perfectly really good human things but that's not where our confidence is from and again these things can be used in our, our lives you know these things can be a force for, good, for a measure of good but our confidence is in the Lord and if it comes to a conflict between these two we know which side we are on and we know which side we're going to choose because actually we put our confidence in the Lord you know it's like when you think about that how many battles did kings win in the word of God think about it when they put their confidence in the Lord they just trusted God how many times did they not even have to fight because their confidence was in the Lord wow that's a, it's a beautiful principle uh, we don't put confidence in in principle we don't put confidence in celebrities celebrity endorsements you know you're not gonna <laughs> worry about that what's the the, the influencers that you know, that's a big thing these days isn't it you know, I'm going to be an influencer tell people what they should do and what products they should buy you know what no we don't put confidence in in in, in princes we don't put confidence in politicians thankfully you know it's like well oh but if only that person was in power we don't put confidence in, in, in politicians sorry if that offends you but we don't uh, we put our confidence in the Lord uh, we don't put confidence in, in churches or in pastors or uh, ministries much as, again as I love our church I love our ministry but that's not the end or it's the Lord uh, again we were just talking about uh, tonight about actually how we point people to God and to a relationship with God themselves one of the, the reasons when we give these quotes for where we scripture comes from when we when we read it it's not to bore people or to interrupt the flow but actually no it's so that people can go away and check it out for themselves go read the word of God go and have the have the relationship directly with the Lord Jesus Christ that's what we are we're building not not people who are reliant on us I remember years ago um, with with my former Pastor, Pastor Boyce in Prague and Pastor Mark here. Often, you know, as a younger believer, you have this idea that you know, well, I'll bring this person to to our to our pastor, and they'll get them saved. You know, and it's like oh, because they're such wonderful spiritual people. They know the Bible. They they're wonderful people. I'll bring the of uh, them, and they just see the, see our church and see the pastor, and then and then the silly thing is, you know, no people have done things like that to me and I'm thinking goodness don't bring them to me <laughs> I'm just a man I don't know anything you know it's like but the point is it's the same for them it's like our confidence is not in the flesh our confidence is not in in uh, in people and it's not even in, in teaching or doctrines or in or in uh, you know uh, ministries it's in the Lord himself 
you know that's the thing you know we, we want people to be in a good church we want to be people to be where there is good teaching where there's a good hermeneutic where you know people have a, a right understanding uh, rightly dividing the word of God that's fine we encourage people from that point of view but you know what we're not going to describe to them prescribe to them where they should be what they should do uh, people are free people are, have the relationship with the Lord themselves that's the most important thing you know uh, uh, we don't put our, our confidence in behaviours in programmes in steps in psychology in strategies no it's in the Lord Jesus Christ it's in him it's in him alone that's all <laughs> I love what it says in, in, in John chapter 2 uh, the end of, of, the, of chapter 2 of John in verse 24 it says but Jesus did not com commit himself unto them because he knew all men and needed not that any should testify of man for he knew what was in man this is the reason why we don't put confidence in man and we don't put confidence in princes because the Lord Jesus Christ he knew what was in a man he knew what was in the heart of a man and actually the word of God tells you what's in the heart of a man you know there's uh, every sin imaginable in the heart of a man there's uh, wickedness in the heart of a man there's foolishness in the heart of a child as well isn't that and the rod of correction shall uh, bring it out but you know this is what the word of God says don't, don't argue with me you know, take it up with the word of God you know but Jesus knew what was in man he was there when man was created remember that on the sixth day well, you probably don't remember because you weren't there but actually you know it's like uh, the sixth day God is created man the Lord Jesus Christ was the creator he was there he knew what went into man the, uh, the great capacity the amazing potential uh, this is why uh, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to take people and use them for incredible feats and use them for his purpose you know they think of everything that has gone on in the kingdom of God uh, through the Lord Jesus Christ using people it's because he knew what was in that but he also knew the negative side of what was in man and their limitations yes he, he knows the potential and he can use them in that but he also he didn't put confidence in man he didn't commit himself in man he didn't testify of man but he knew the heart of man and he knows the heart of man and he knows our weaknesses and that's why he went to the cross because he knew man's heart he knew man's weakness and he knew that there was nothing that man could do without him he knew that there was nothing that man could do for his own state other than trust in what he was going to do and what he was going to accomplish so yeah the plan was there We don't trust in in princes. We don't trust in principalities either. Mm, wow, well, that's another uh, big question. Principalities, the demons, the spiritual strongholds, uh, spiritual power. You know, we don't put our confidence in these things. Prayer is a wonderful gift. And a wonderful tool but our confidence is not in prayer itself people pray in many faiths people pray to many gods 
people pray all sorts of things but it's the God behind the prayer the God that the prayer is directed to that, uh, that is the key thing you know sometimes we see you know there's power in prayer you know that's fine that's good yes but actually no there's power in the God that we pray to not the praying itself and not the prayer itself and you know we don't want to we don't want to put these things on a pedestal but all prayer is such a wonderful thing that they are no yeah it's it's a tool that God it's a, it's a means of communication that God uses between us and him but the point is that we put our trust in the Lord not in something else evangelism okay fine great nice fine but no it's it's not it's uh, why why do we do that it's because of the God behind it not the thing itself good things we don't put our trust in good things it might be a uh, good activity that's well, but that's not where our trust lies our trust is in the Lord trust in the Lord not our own understanding not somebody else's understanding <laughs> don't make anything into an idol <laughs> but just trust in the Lord simple message tonight we don't have to go very far it is better to trust in the Lord and to put confidence in man it is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes confidence it needs to be put in something doesn't it but actually with the Lord we can just trust him but there's no need for the extra action there it is literally just a relationship it's not about action it's relationship just the Lord the best thing we can do with our life is to just to trust in the Lord just trust him just give it all to him and not worry about ourselves not worry about the situations just give it all to him Many situations will come, many situations will go, many things will come out of the blue unexpectedly. But you know what? Our God is there. He knew about it beforehand. He'll know about it afterwards. But we trust in the Lord. We place our trust in Him. Uh, trust in Him alone. Nothing more, nothing else. Amen. Yeah, let's pray. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you again, Lord, for your faithfulness, your goodness, and thank you, Lord, that you're a God that we can trust. That we don't have to put our faith in anything else, in anyone else. There are many candidates that will put themselves up there for us to trust them. People, family members, relationships, powerful leaders whoever it is there, there are lots of people that want our trust that want our confidence that want our attention but actually Lord the one that we we only need to trust the only one we ever need to trust is the Lord Jesus Christ the one who has proved his love to us by going to Calvary laying down his life and being our saviour thank you Lord for that thank you Lord for that truth thank you Lord for the power of that truth tonight Lord we just want to worship you again tonight we have nothing else to do we have nothing else to give just our trust into your hands Lord thank you Lord that it's a gra the greatest thing we can ever do is trust in God the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ 
to learn of you by the Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you and we worship you now. And Lord, we ask if there is anyone out there who is watching who has never fully placed their trust in you. And maybe they've gone so far but they've still trusted in themselves, their own judgment, their own ideas, or their own, in a religious idea, a faith idea, a, a concept. Put my tr I trust so far, but I don't fully rely on you, Lord. Mm. Then, Lord, we just pray that this would be the time when they say, No, I just surrender everything to you, Lord. Because you're the only one that I need. And actually, you're the only one that is worthwhile. Thank you, Lord. I want to trust you. Help me to trust mm -hmm. you. Help me to discover you. I put my full trust in you and you alone. Thank you, Lord. You are the God of mercy. You are the God of forgiveness. You are the God of, of wonders. And Lord, I want to trust you. I want you to be my Savior. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you've done that for the first time, let someone know. That's the most important thing as well. Well, we're going to say good night for those of us here. I'm sure those of us who are in the room may talk about these things for a little bit longer if they want to. Um, it's good to be able to do that together. Join us in person on Sunday morning. We're going to be again in Backford Village in the school building at the back there join us come and meet us at 11 o'clock uh, and come and then uh, Sunday night we'll be online again uh, but again if anyone wants to come another Wednesday we can do it again uh, maybe we're going to have a, a prayer meeting at, at together again soon as well just let's do let's take as the weather opens up uh, let's take as many opportunities and let's also do uh, do this as well as we come up towards Easter. Let's just really focus back on the Lord Jesus Christ and the real meaning of that season. Uh, let's uh, let's get together. Let's worship God. Uh, we're going to sign off now. Bye for now. God bless you and see you again soon.